Jake Coppinger, who is the young, supremely talented Year 11 student who has a passion for science, film, and the emerging field of mechatronics. Hi, Jake, Hello. welcome. Congratulations. Thank you for having me. And also Nicole Vincent, who's a philosopher, and your talk was all about uh, the future ethical dilemmas of performance-enhancing drugs, amongst other things. Shall we make them welcome? And again, if you have any questions for Lucy or Jake, please uh, grab Lucy and um, Lucy for Nicole and Jake. So I grab, grab Lucy and Stephen. So I thought maybe just to begin, Jake, because I can see you're wearing your swell yep. we might have a look at a video of, of how this works. So let, let's have a look at the swell and how this invention actually works. I love it. Thank you. That's, that's everything. We, did we miss anything in that film that tells us exactly what's happening, Jake? It's just about everything. It is a very dramatic video. Yeah, um, the music is good. And, and describe what you've got on your hand. This is all things that you can, you've made at home going to the shops. Is that right? Yeah, so all the parts here you can buy um, at your local electronic store or online. There's nothing special. It's about how I've put these pieces together. And can you talk to me a little bit more about the role that this kind of wearable technology, where you might see it going in the future? Yeah, there's definitely a massive field of wearable technology because as computing becomes smaller and more powerful, it becomes more ubiquitous in our lives and to the point where you can wear it on you and you don't even realise it these days. You walk everywhere with this smartphone so much you don't even realise it. So I think there's many applications that we haven't even thought of that are coming out of this technology. And Nicole, as somebody, you were talking about performance enhancing drugs. This does perform, well, it does make us perform better, I suppose. What, what's your perspective on, on this kind of technology? I think it's exciting. <laughs> I mean, how, how could you not be excited, right, by something that you can wear and do things seamlessly that helps you achieve, yeah. Is there connections, though, between what you were saying with, uh, with obviously, with taking a pill to make you perform better in the workplace, whether you're the idea that you might have to do this as a doctor or someone who's a Jetstar employee? What are the connections there? Okay, so the, con so the main connections are that here's the technology which you don't... You are on, your, on the outside. It feels like using a hammer, like something that is not quite penetrating your body, which is what happens when you take drugs, right? So one of the other technologies that I unfortunately couldn't get to talk about, it's called transcranial direct current stimulation. It's, so these are devices that you can, again, build yourself for 20 bucks if you know how to use a soldering iron. I'm sure you could do, do this yourself. <laughs> and runs on a nine volt battery. But because of the fact that you end up attaching electrodes to your skull and it does something to your brain, people think, ooh, no, I wouldn't want that. But yet, as long as it stays outside, we feel like that's all right. So don't go inside, stay outside <laughs> yeah. on the exterior. That makes a lot of sense to me. Lucy Carter, you have a question from our audience? I sure do. Alec, quest uh, Alec what's your question? Um, so obviously bio biological and technological advancements are making stuff easier for us to do. Where do you see this going for both of you? And do you really think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Because like, technology, we all think is a good thing in biology, like drugs and all that, it's going to be a bad thing. But in a sense, they're both exactly the same and they're going to just merge everything together. Nicole? Okay, so I think technology is awesome. I'm a nerd, right? I'm a, I'm a, I've got all the latest gadgets. And the last, the last message I would like any of you to take away is that we should be afraid of these technologies. In fact, partly what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to make sure that we learn how to navigate um, our own emotions between the extremes of, yes, I want to embrace all of this, or, no, this is all tremendously scary. I think that what's important here is to talk about, to bring these discussions out into the open, just like we are doing right now, so we can 
talk to people, find out what does the average person think, right? Rather than having techno nerds like myself saying, hey, pedal this stuff. This is how it's going to go. Before we get to what you were talking about in your, your talk earlier about the new normal, that we are part of that conversation. Yes. Mm. Stephen Stockwell, you have a, a question? I certainly do. I have Hannah with me here. Hi. Um, my question is for Nicole. I um, was actually diagnosed with narcolepsy last year and uh, have been prescribed modafinil, which has completely turned my life around, which you know, is it's a fantastic drug. Right. It's been used correctly. Before that, um, you know, my life was in a bit of a disarray and I managed to drag myself through a law degree kind of despite it. Um, but I guess my question is, you know, also coming from a bit of a legal background, how do you see or, or what's a good way of monitoring um, access to these medications? I mean, my specialist, um, I'm also currently studying medicine, and my specialist, who I have a lot of good kind of medical talks with, you know, when it came to dosing, he said, look, start off taking one a day, you can go up to four, here's six months of scripts, and just kind of fill it as you need. So I guess um, my, my point in using myself as an example is that it's very, or it's not very regulated, it's not like other medications where patients are given a very set dose and a very kind of finite, um, limited access to medication. It's, it can be up and down. Thank you. you. Know. Nicole, your response? Okay. Every drug tends to be received differently by every person. So there are huge differences, right? And one of the most important things that we need to do as a society is not just to say, let's embrace the same drug for everybody at the same dose. Rather, monitoring is one of the most important things. And you, know, you, you can monitor dosage levels, you can monitor uh, precisely what sort of physiological response a person gets, um, whether they're developing addiction. Um, how precisely are they taking it? Are they taking it intravenously? Are they taking this? Are they snorting it? Are they taking it as a tablet? So, um, the sort of example that you described, right? I mean, what an amazing uh, result to go from having narcolepsy to suddenly being able to stay awake. Um, it, it's, it's, it's quite extraordinary, and thank you so much for your question. And I must say, I, I, I'm really pleased to have Jay Coppinger and Nicole Vincent here on the TEDx studio stage. So we have to thank them and, and uh, get on to our next segment. So thank you very much to Nicole Vincent and also Jay Coppinger. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much.